Hey guys, Chili here. Welcome back to 3D Fundamentals Tutorial 12. Today, we are going to be adding a vertex shader to our pipeline. You know, we've added the pixel shader, we had a little detour, now it's time to let the other shoe drop at the vertex shader. You guys probably know that pixel shader and the vertex shader are the two, the big baddies of the shaders here. These guys were added in DirectX version 8, and uh, you can't you can't draw triangles without them. So uh, what, what is a vertex shader? Um, it's basically all it does is it takes the whole, this, every vertex in the geometry and it can uh, apply some transformations to them. Uh, our current vertex shader, well let me show you right here, it's not doing much uh, in the way of interesting shit. All it's doing is applying a rotation and a translation, basically moving the vertices of our mesh from object space into the space of the world. That's all it's doing here. But there's so much more we could be doing with a vertex shader. So we're going to be making this uh, this stage here configurable like we did with the uh, rasterization in the pixel shader. And then we'll explore a few simple uh, applications of that configurability. Alright, first let's take a look at how the pipeline changes when we incorporate the new shader stage in here. Uh, so first thing you're going to notice is bind rotation, bind translation, they're no longer in here. And the reason for that, it's, you know, it's pretty simple. That stuff is now going to be handled by the vertex shader stage, so we don't have to worry about it in the pipeline itself. Um, now here, process vertices, this is where we're actually going to execute our shader. And it is quite simple. Instead of running a uh, range-based for loop here, what we're doing is we are just doing std transform and uh, vertices begin and end, vertices out, so we're creating a separate uh, vector for the output vertices and we just run the functor that is effect.vs on each of these vertices. So we can use std transform to do that in a nice succinct and idiomatic way. Now one thing you're going to notice here is this type here vs out. So what is vs out? Well, um, the type vertex is going to represent the vertex as it is input into our pipeline. VS out is the, the vertexes that are output by our uh, vertex shader, which could be different than the input vertexes. They're, the vertex shader has the power that it can change the data type of the vertexes being input. So you can output, you can add extra data or you can remove data or have different kinds of data between your input vertices and your output vertices. It's flexible in that way. So there we have a type def in here and the vertex shader, each shader will define its output type and then we just want to uh, redefine that type name as VS out. So yeah, you apply the transformation, you get out the, uh, the output vertices and now just a couple of changes here. Now all of these vectors are going to be taking vectors of VS out, not vectors of uh, vertex because it could be a different type than the input vertex. So these are all VS out. That's all VS out. There we go. And uh, VS out, VS out, VS out. I might have missed some. I can't remember, but they'll be they'll be caught later on. And here we just get rid of these matrix and vertices because they are not required. That stuff will be put into the actual vertex shader itself. So now that we've changed the pipeline like this, the pipeline is expecting that effect has a member vertex shader. Uh, so we're going to have to change all of the effects now to... Uh, to account for this. Now the uh, the vertex shader for each of these effects, they're all going to do the same thing, right? They're going to do the thing that our pipeline was doing before we got that shit out of there. So instead of, you know, copy and pasting that shader code into each one of these effects, I created a default shader. Uh, let me see if I can find it here. So here's a default vertex shader and it has the rotation, it has the translation, and you got your, your member functions bind, and you've got your shader operator, which just does the thing that we were doing before. So it's a very, very basic uh, vertex shader, and then instead of copy and pasting that code into each of the effects, we can just include default vertex shader and then do a type def. So we're just type defing uh, default vertex shader uh, templated on vertex as a vertex shader. So I've made the default vertex shader templated so that we can use it with different kinds of vertices. It doesn't care as long as those vertices have a position, everything is good. So for each of these ones, you type def the default vertex shader as a vertex shader, and you add a vertex shader as a member of the class. Same thing with texture effect, right? Not doing anything different here. Text, vertex color effect. It's all the same goddamn shit. And 
Then in here, we've just, for the scenes, all we gotta do is change pipeline.bindRotation to pipeline.effect vertex shader bind rotation. That's the only change that uh, happens here and everything works like it should before. And now we have the vertex shader incorporated and all of our previous stuff working. So now we can do some extra shit. So the first vertex uh, shader effect I implemented was this little guy here, the wave effect. You might say, Chili, that looks fucking sweet. How did you do it? Well, let me show you. Uh, there's a couple things that need to be, that need to happen for us to be able to do this. Now, the way we achieve this effect is pretty simple. All we do is we, uh, we take all the vertices of our geometry and we apply some kind of, you know, Y offset to them, either moving them up or down by a little bit. And, uh, and that gives you the wave effect. Now, the problem with this is if we've got just a simple plane, uh, it's got two triangles, four vertices. If we move these guys up and down, we're not gonna get a very wavy uh, effect here because it's all just straight lines. What we wanna do is we wanna tessellate this motherfucker. So that means adding way more vertices than you would normally need to render a flat plane. Because of course, when we transform this thing, it's not gonna be flat. Some of these are gonna be pulled up, some of them are gonna be pulled down, and it's gonna create a wavy effect. So first we need to do a little bit of tessellation. It's not too hard, it's just basic logic should be able to get you through this one. Uh, so in plane.h, what have I done here? Well, I mean, I added plane.h, we didn't have a plane before. And this one, again, is a class, just a wrapper around a few static functions, get plane. We'll get, get you a plane, and you can decide the number of divisions here, so you decide the tessellation of the plane, basically. And it will just create a, generate a bunch of vertices, and uh, generate all the indices properly, with, you know, a little bit of math here. It's not too, it's not too hard to figure out. Uh, so we got the uh, get plane, plane, that's confusing. Uh, this one just doesn't have any uh, texturing with it. And then we got another one here, get skinned, and does the same thing, allows you to figure out how tessellated you want your plane, and it, it will, um, well first it gets your plane, plane, and then it adds the texture coordinates to that, and returns it. So we got our tessellated uh, plane here, what are we gonna do with it? Well, we got the, the vertex texture effect, and uh, what this one does is it has a vertex shader, uh, it's obviously got the bind rotation, bind translation, we still need those guys. Uh, but it also has a bunch of different uh, constants here, basically. Uh, the frequency of the wave, the frequency of the scrolling, amplitude of the wave. Uh, and then we've got a function here, set time, that allows you to set the time. So what it basically is, a wave, you're obviously going to have a sinusoid, right? What do we have here? Well, first we do the standard translation rotation, get our point into world space. And then in world space, we are going to further give it an offset in the Y uh, component. And the offset is going to be determined by a sinusoid function. And that's just the time times a frequency scroll uh, plus position x times frequency wave. Now this ain't trig class, this ain't kindergarten, but Chili gonna be a, gonna give you a little bit of a breakdown because he's such a nice guy. So you got a sinusoid wave uh, going something like this in, uh, in your screen space. So this is gonna be your x-axis and this is going to be this is going to represent the offset in the y-axis that is going to be applied. Uh, so this can be represented by sine, it's going to be x times some kind of waviness uh, value here. So I believe the larger you make this w value, uh, the more wavy this will get, okay? And then you can add some kind of uh, phase value, we'll call it phi, and the phase just means like a different phase will draw uh, wave of the same waviness, but it'll be offset by a little bit, okay? So this this one controls the offset, and what we can do is we can make this one a function of time, so now we have time times, I don't know, the speed of the wave, and what that means is that as time progresses, this wave is gonna slide around uh, on the screen, and that is how you get the wave, the, the animated wave function there. And then to control the size of the wave, you just you know multiply by an am amplitude here in the front. And there you go, Bob is your uncle, and that's what all this shit is. So this this is basically the speed at which the wave is moving. This is how waviness, the, how wavy the waviness is. That's how you say that, right? There you go. And every frame you just set the time, and that controls the animation. 
and then for the scene you know you should be able to understand this just by reading it but you're going to template pipeline wave vertex texture effect as our pipeline and pipeline vertex is going to be our vertex type we are what is this it list bullshit it so it's index triangle list of vertices uh we got a pipeline we got some bullshits here and uh, we just create our index triangle list as plain get skinned vertex and tessellate it on 20. create a pipeline create our scene that's just the uh, the parent class of this and then we bind a texture to our freaking pipeline our pixel shader and down here we do our shit as normal except we also have to remember to set time every frame and time is just being updated here by adding dt to some floating point value and there you go there you go you have it you have your wavy shit and it looks pretty cool i, I believe you will agree with me now one thing you'll notice about the wave texture effect is that the, the vertex output type is the same as the vertex input type. So let's create a uh, shader here to demonstrate having a different vertex output than your input. Alright, so here I added a simple effect where the color of a vertex is determined by its position. And this effect is going to have a different output vertex type than the input vertex type. So, uh, let's take a look at this stuff here. So the input vertex type is very simple. It's a simple vertex, only has position. Uh, and then we have a vertex shader and we define the output vertex type. We don't just type def. We define a new output type that has color. And the way we do that is in the vertex shader here, we determine its color based on, uh, based on its position. So we procedurally generate a color for the vertex. So now we're adding information in this shader that didn't exist before. Then your pixel shader is, you know, your, your standard pixel shader just takes that color, puts it out after it's been interpolated across the face of the triangle. And if you run that, you get this stupid thing. You can see as you rotate it and the vertices have different positions, you get different colors on them. You can, you know, uh, you can pull it in or out and you can see definitely changing colors there, the vertices, depending on positions. So, yeah, that's it's not a very impressive effect, but it does demonstrate the ability to uh, to have different output vertices types than your input types. You have flexibility there. You can procedurally add information into your vertices in the shader. But that's where we're going to leave it for today. There's a lot more, obviously, there's a lot more interesting stuff you can do with vertex shaders, and we'll be exploring it a little bit later when we get into stuff like dynamic lighting. But for right now, this is where we're going to leave it at. There's only one shader left for me to introduce to you, and then we can get into the dynamic lighting. So stay tuned for that in the next episode. Until then, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button. It helps a lot. And I will see you soon with some more 3D fundamentals.